This afternoon's lecture is on Kondratiev's um, long wave cycle, so it's a continuation from the morning's lecture. Over to Professor. Thank you, Sandeep. <coughs> Kondratiev was a Soviet economist, and he, he made his name famous. by discovering a long wave cycle in economics. Now, there have been several business cycles discovered before Kondratiev discovered his. There was the uh, Javon cycle, there was the uh, various others, I'm not going to uh, review them. But this particular cycle, which Kondratiev discovered, was the first real long wave cycle. The others were all at most 11, 12 years long. Kondratiev came up with one which is 50, 60, and as we now discovered, even 70 year long cycles. Full cycle takes 70 years on the average to complete and then repeat. <clears throat> the story of Kondratiev is very interesting. As I said, he lived and worked during the communist government, ultimately Stalin, who uh, took <coughs> objection to one of the consequences of this long wave cycle. This consequence was that after reaching the top and then declining, the economy hits a bottom. So far, so good with Stalin. But after this bottom, it starts improving again. And goes on with a stronger and stronger economy. So, and that's, of course, the capitalist uh, under the capitalist system. Now that was too much for Stalin. He would not envisage even a temporary improvement in the, in the condition of the capitalist economy. According to Stalin, once it goes into a bare mode, into a mode which makes economic conditions worse, that's it. It's going to kill the capitalist system. That was Stalin's point. So he just had to do away with such a nuisance as Kondratiev, and he put him in the gulag, and after several years in the gulag, he was put on trial and sentenced to death as a capitalist uh, saboteur. So this is a very sad story, but it shows how uh, the communist system dealt with, uh, rather than opening a, a debate and having an exchange of ideas just summarily do away with everybody who even so slightly disagrees with the prevailing ideology. I think he died in 1938 during the uh, these uh, 
subversion trials, all uh, artificially uh, provoked and a lot of people, including a lot of communists, were <coughs> just sentenced to death and killed, eliminated. <coughs> so, uh, what we are going to talk about is the linkage. In a way, this is what Kondratyev found in his research. <coughs> he used statistical methods to follow economic indicators. In fact, 22 of them, all the way from the French Revolution to the, uh, uh, to the days of his study, and I'm not going to list all 22, but uh, certainly the interest rate was one, the price level was another, and then the wage rates, he studied the variation, what the type of variation these indicators have gone through, and then import level, export level, and as I say, many more. 22 of them. And he studied that uh, not all, but the vast majority of these followed the same cycle. And this was the long wave cycle, which was ultimately named after him. And as I know, he was sent to the Gulag and ultimately killed. But after World War II, Western economists discovered his publications. <coughs> and there was a revival of this theory long after he died as I say, after World War II, and the uh, search was on, finding obscure papers and uh, notes and publications of uh, Kondratyev. And one uh, follow-up, which Kondratyev himself didn't see or didn't notice was that actually it's enough to take instead of 22 enough to take two the two major indicators which is the price level and the rate of interest and if you take these two they already display the um, long wave cycle. They show how prices, the price level, average, these, these are averages, uh, increase, reach a top, after that go into a decline. And this is followed with leads and lags, so it's not an exact correlation, but a very close correlation, nevertheless. <coughs> with some leads and lags, the rate of interest follows the price level. So we can we can talk about four phases. Okay. Price level rises. So let me just abbreviate it with 
an arrow like this. <coughs> and that's follow, that's uh, <coughs> Coincidental with lids and lags, the interest rates also rise. And then the price level falls, interest rates, oh, that's not what I wanted to do, I wanted to indicate falling with this arrow and then interest rates fall. We'll just say rise and fall. Okay. And then This is the case when the price level leads. Just the abbreviate PL leads. And two more when the interest rate I are leads. So that means interest rates rise and follow and with a delay that's uh, what is meant by leads and lags. So the price level also rises so we can describe this situation interest rates lead the price level And uh, then, when interest rates fall, and the price level also falls. So that's all in Kondratiev, but he carried a heavy baggage of 22 indicators and it turned out that you greatly simplify the whole picture if you confine your attention to instead of 22 just two uh, indicators the price level and interest rates. Professor? Yes. Are you saying that both the price level and the interest rates can lead at different times? No, no, that's not what I mean. What I mean is that, <coughs> you see, this is a long wave cycle, so think of, think of 60 years on average, the full cycle. Half of that would be rising, half of that would be falling. And both the price level and interest <coughs> rates do either rise or fall for 30 years. But this is not a rigid correlation, that it starts exactly at the same time and when there is a little twist in one, there is another <coughs> twist in the other. This is not what we mean. What we mean is, here is the chart, and this is time, 
axis and this is a double axis for one color will show the rate of interest and the other will show the price level. So suppose the red shows the rate uh, the, I'm taking black shows the price level The zigs and zags are not important. I just put them in to show that this is not a linear curve. So that would be half, that would be 30 years. Zero, 30. And then it turns around. How's that? To make it complete. Yeah, we started from zero, so oh. Sixty. That's sixty Oh, I'm sorry. That's yes. <laughs> that's the rising phase and that's the falling phase. Well anyhow I'm explaining leads and lags now. So it could be that interest rates turn around later. Okay, there is a turnaround in the price level. And here, interest rates lead and the price level lags. <coughs> when one leads, the other lags. And then... And it could be that interest rates start lagging here because it turns around. <coughs> oh, interest rates start leading here. Okay, it turns around before the price level does. <coughs> so here, this is a case of lead no lag, right? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, and here it leads. But I could also say that um, the price level here leads and then it lags here. So that's what I mean leading and lagging. All right? Okay. It's uh, the, shall we say, the loosest case of correlation. It's a correlation, but it's loose, not, not rigid at all. And uh, you can describe this with an analogy of two dogs joined by a leash. Okay, two dogs are running up and down the hill and uh, because of the leash neither one can get too far ahead of the other because then the leash would uh, get tight and uh, they just have to keep with the same distance but it's still possible for either one to run ahead some and then the leash takes over. Okay, so that's, that may be a useful way of thinking about this. Two dogs running up and down the hills, but there is a leash between them. Okay, now going back here, some of these, and there are four cases here. One, two, three, four. Some of these had already been observed before Kondratyev came along and were accepted with little argument because there was an easy explanation. 
For instance, the first two were explained as follows. <coughs> if the price level goes up, then producers have overrun, cost overruns. They pay prices which are high and rising and they have no immediate ways of uh, covering these higher prices. So when a lender lends money, because of these high... Uh, actually, I don't have to bring in producers, just lenders and borrowers. So there's the lender. And he observes the price rise, what translates into a loss for him if he continues to land at the previously established interest rate. Because in terms of purchasing power, he will not be able to recover the value what he lent. So his only recourse is what? Demanding higher interest rates. To charge a higher interest rate, and he will. So th uh, that's what happens in a period when the price level rises. The interest rate will also rise, simply because the lenders refuse to lend at the old rate of interest. On the other hand, if the price level falls, of course the lenders would still like to continue to charge uh, the higher rate, but this will not be acceptable to the borrowers, and the borrowers have some leeway and put pressure on the lender to reduce his rate of interest. So as the price level falls, interest rates will also fall. All right? This is plausible and this can be worked out and certainly economists did work it out before uh, Kondratyev came along. Could you put the name of Kondratyev? Kondratyev. Since this is, his name is transliterated from the Russian, you see very different varieties. Kondratyev, the last letter is doubled and it could be 2F or 2F. <coughs> Or one V, I think. K O N D R A T I E F F. Yeah, that's yeah. one version, and a V, single V, is another. Okay, and he died in uh, 1920. <coughs> Eight in the Gulag. I think I need the other, the other chart. Uh, oh. <coughs> so that was the case with these two. This was nothing new and well accepted. However, There are two here, right? This means interest rates fall, and as a consequence, the price level also falls. There was problem with explaining this. There was problem with explaining, and uh, a lot of economists observed that. Uh, this even goes against uh, the uh, plausible uh, explanation. 
So there was controversy about this, and there still is. I think there is no general agreement. That, but this is the whole thing, this whole phenomenon is called linkage. The word linkage suggests that the price level and the interest rates are linked just like two dogs with a leash and, uh, and as a consequence you can describe this uh, long, long wave cycle of Kondrachev in terms of the linkage, in terms of the linkage. So there is one little problem here, the explanation of these two correlation is not uh, widely accepted or not uh, or, or there is controversy about it okay so now it's our job to find the explanation and talk about it because i think that uh, that is no, we can go. That is what is happening. We are going to explain linkage in terms of an oscillating money flow. Could you could you write it? Yeah. Uh, oscillating double. Up. Double. Up. After the double R, there's an A. Oscillating money flows between bond. The, the bond market and the commodity market. to have in mind is uh, the uh, flow and ebb of the oceans. Okay? We know it's caused by the moon. The moon <coughs> has a mass and the water on the earth also has a mass and there is a pool. The, uh, the mass is uh, just how comparable they are is not important, but obviously this is the full explanation of the uh, tidal ebb of the oceans. And uh, then there are lesser influences also which will modify this or modulate this and there are the neap tide and uh, you know but I'm not this is just just an analogy not nothing more and it's interesting because the when the money flows from the bond market to the commodity market. What is happening then? Then the price of the bond. Well, you see, this is arbitrage, right? So those who have the bond, they sell.
as a concept as a consequence of this, the bondholders sell, so the increase of bonds, I'm uh, sorry, the supply of bonds is increasing, so as a consequence, 